Tourism experts want to market Cape Cod as a sports destination. Residents will get a chance to weigh in on the proposed FY16 school budget tonight. And registration is open for summer classes at Cape Cod Community College. These stories and more on this episode of Barnstable Today. It's Monday, March 16, 2015. I'm Sarah Mannell. The Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce hopes sporting events will be a big draw for tourism. Tom, Town Manager Tom Lynch met with Chamber officials last week to talk about Barnstable's athletic resources. They, they were looking for information of hired a consultant and, and, and they're looking for information about the condition of our fields, the type of facilities we have. Um, the, 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 the numbers are quite staggering on uh, the percentage of people that take vacations just to go to a sporting event for their kids or for um, uh, adult softball, things of that nature. And the Cape Cod region lends itself well to that because we have a lot of uh, facilities and other things that people can do once uh, the family uh, gets here. So the uh, consultant was asking uh, towns throughout the Cape, Sandwich was there, Falmouth, uh, Yarmouth, <coughs> ourselves, um, about what facilities we had, what um, uh, sort of challenges that might be there. And I think the thing that we've seen over the years, and I've tried to do some correction with this through our capital improvement plan, is A, our fields have deteriorated over the years, and, and B, we don't really keep them in competition, uh, you know, uh, condition. Right. So if you're going to attract a, a men's softball tournament where people are coming nationally to uh, compete in different age groups, uh, your, your fields really need to be top-notch. So they asked us about um, what challenges were there and, and uh, things of that nature. So very preliminary, they, they, uh, it was an all-day meeting with various segments of the community and, and uh, town managers were invited to you know, one session with the, with the chamber. So Lynch says he was glad to participate in the meeting but sees a long road ahead before that plan comes to fruition. School officials are bracing themselves for possible cuts to education funding. The governor's proposed budget cuts all of the funding for quality full-day kindergarten. Superintendent of Schools Dr. Mary Schakowsky says those cuts have forced them to take another look at the budget. It was a grant that many school districts used to fund, um, you know, kindergarten assistance, uh, personnel namely, and uh, we chose at this point to look at other areas to reduce because it's so critical to have these uh, assistants in our kindergarten classrooms. So we're going to be proposing um, some recommendations around uh, reductions in, in uh, administ administrative positions. We still uh, specifically not targeting, obviously, principals, but um, other administrative positions. So it's, it's going to be an area of concern, but once again, I, I think um, until the, the governor's budget is settled, uh, some of this funding may be restored, but once again, you know, our job is to present a balanced budget, and so tonight we've got the public hearing to do that. We've also got a discussion about uh, the athletic fees that will, uh, I think, that has raised some concern for some parents. I think um, tonight's recommendation hopefully is going to address some of those concerns, uh, and um, looking forward to a certainly a discussion with the school committee on all of these. But once again, tonight's public hearing, uh, we may or may not need another uh, meeting with the school committee that will be determined after tonight and whether the chair and school committee feels we need another meeting prior to the final vote, which will be on April 9th. A public hearing on the proposed FY16 budget will be held tonight in the town hall hearing room at 7. The search for a new principal at Barnstable West Barnstable Elementary School is moving along. Schakowsky says after a series of interviews, the field of candidates was narrowed to three. And uh, they brought forward three candidates. One candidate is an internal candidate, uh, Beth Benin, who is currently an assistant principal over, over at the Barnstable Intermediate School. The other two candidates uh, are uh, currently administrators, and they are in the districts. Uh, there's a district in New Hampshire and then a district in uh, Worcester. So this week I'm, I'm conducting one-on-one uh, -on -one interviews. I, along with Kristen Harmon, our assistant superintendent, will be doing the one-on-one -on -one interviews with the candidates. After that, we're going to be going and visiting their districts. Uh, I, 
I'm going to New Hampshire at the end of the week and uh, Worcester the following week, and then we'll be visiting BIS to talk with the staff about uh, the leadership over uh, at BIS with uh, Beth Deneen. Schakowsky says site visits are an important way to view candidates in their own environment. And, uh, being able to talk with people uh, about their leadership, about how they interact with students, how they interact with parents, um, what, what they see as their strengths, but I think just the, the, the observation of seeing them in sort of their environment helps to help us to get, you know, it's another piece of data for us to, to, to talk about because it comes down to when it, you're looking at these three candidates, it comes down to a fit. You know, is this person a good fit for our district and for uh, BWB? So looking forward to doing those site visits, that, that they're a critical part. We ask the candidate to put forward a schedule with respect to the people that we do want to see and meet. We spend about two hours at their, at their site. Schakowsky hopes to bring a final candidate before the school committee by April 9th. Town officials hope a recent survey conducted at the Barnstable Transfer Station will provide a better look at residents' trash disposal habits. Energy Coordinator Richard Elrick says they are also looking at how many residents are purchasing trash stickers and how many residents are taking advantage of the town's new free recycling sticker. Um, we, and, and again, by way of the total number of, of uh, stickers that have been sold so far, the, uh, essentially for those of us that are living uh, here year-round, uh, March 1st was the deadline to obtain your uh, transfer station trash sticker. To date, we've sold 7,402 of those. And what's very interesting is that we have given away 1,085 recycling-only stickers. And, of course, you'll remember and your viewers will remember that no matter what you want to do with that transfer station, if you want to recycle or dispose of your trash, you need to get a sticker. So that's good information. And the survey questions, I just want to quickly read through them. How many trips per week on average do you make to the transfer station? And they have options, one, two, three, or four. How many bags of trash do you dispose of, 30-gallon size? How many household members do you have? Do you compost your kitchen straps, scraps, and do you use the transfer station mainly for recycling only, trash disposal only, or trash recycling? So, Elric says once the data is fully entered, he will share the information with town leaders and the public. Today is the first day to register for summer classes at Cape Cod Community College. Communications Director Michael Gross says it's the first time the college has allowed students to register for summer classes so early. We know that over the next two weeks, starting now and actually right straight through the end of March, all the various public and private colleges and universities go on their spring break. And many, many students actually come home. They all don't go party in Florida or somewhere. And, uh, and when they're home, they're beginning to think about planning their summer. It, it doesn't seem possible, but if you're in that environment, in that four-year environment, you're already thinking about what summer is going to bring, what next fall is going to bring, the types of credits you need to get to boost up your program. And we have many, many students in the summertime who come to us who are, in fact, four-year college students needing to get that extra science, extra English, things like that. So we've done this now this week, beginning today, to allow these students to take a look at what we will offer. Our full summer program is up on our website. Uh, in fact, we distributed some handouts uh, throughout the community over the weekend and showing what's there. Actually, it's, it's quite complex. You can take short-term courses, a full summer. There's, there's quite an opportunity here for a lot of different things. So we really encourage the public to go to the college's website. Uh, you can either type summer up into the little search box in the top right or look down in the bottom left and there's a, a semester schedule of, of courses that you can click on summer. And we really encourage people to look because right now you can get those seats, but they will be closed out. There's a, a point at which classes go up and you just can't offer anymore and so students would be locked out. So we suggest the public, and frankly, we expect our own students will do it too, can go to the website today for the very first time and register for summer. It's, it's a great thing. And the website to find out more about Cape Cod Community College's summer offerings is capecod.edu. Well, be sure to tune in to our hour-long news program, Barnstable, this morning, weekdays at 7 a.m. On tomorrow's show, we will chat with Police Chief Paul McDonald. We'll talk with DPW Director Dan Santos. And in our new Community Profile segment, we will learn more about the Cape Cod Symphony and Conservatory with Executive Director Jerome Carter. For Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Mannell.